Okay guys, so in this video we are gonna talk about code splitting and lazy loading. Yay! Yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, basically, we're gonna talk about what code splitting is and a little bit on what lazy loading is and when we would like to do something like this. Alright, so you may have heard about code splitting because uh, in front-end world and everything that has to do with Webpack, everything is either about uh, critical paths, uh, styles, inlining styles, CSS in JS, and code splitting. These are like everything in uh, in our exist uh, in our world right now, and uh, for good reason, at least when it comes to code splitting. And the basic idea is very simple. So you have most likely some type of bundle. Let's say you're using Webpack or Parcel or something like that, right? Now. Let's say for the sake of argument that you have figured out that when you first load your page, because that's one of those important things, right? To load your page as quickly as we possibly can. Now, what if you realize that I have all this other application logic, like all this other code that I don't really need to show to my user when the page first loads? If, because if you think about it, let's say that you have the, a I don't know, a legal document or a legal agreement type of thing with cookies and other information that, yeah, you know, it is it is important, let's be honest here, but at the end of the day, it's probably not the most important thing that you can show to your user when they're first hitting your homepage, right? So these things, they do add weight to the initial load time when we're sending over, over this, these bundles, right? So wouldn't it be great if you could say, hey, you know what, just wait with grabbing that stuff until later. Okay, you're gonna do two network requests to get both of these separate bundles or these separate chunks as we call them, but the benefit is that the initial load time for the user is gonna be super super fast and then you don't have to grab the that extra code for that stuff that they don't really care so much about until some other time. It can be a delay of all right you may wait a few seconds or you can do it on click. There are many strategies for how to get that extra bundle and we're going to touch on that as well. But that is the basics of code splitting that you're simply you have this big pile of code and you split it up into smaller parts where the parts that aren't so important or that the parts that you want to cache long term we're going to touch on that as well are in a separate bundle and the stuff that you want to show very quickly or changes very frequently is in a different bundle. Now, one other scenario is that let's say that you want things to be cached long term. Now, why would you want to think about this sort of stuff? Well, it's sim that's fairly straightforward as well. So when you are working on a project, usually what you will do is that you will work with different libraries, right? Now, if you think about that, when, you sh when you're shipping code on a weekly basis, how often do you actually change, say, React or Angular or Vue, like one of your frameworks or one of your big dependencies? These are very unlikely to change all that much. But remember, whenever you change something about your code and you ship another bundle, you're going to have a new file going down to the browser. So you could also use code splitting to just split out those de those de dependencies that does, they don't really change all that much, right? And then you can simply cache them as a separate file on the user's computer so that the only thing that they have to refetch when they visit your site is the stuff that has actually changed, which also can lead to a bit of a performance increase, especially for these bigger frameworks that are probably the thing that is weighing down your application the most. So, now let's move on to lazy loading. So lazy loading is just basically the process of saying that, all right, I'm going to fetch this thing here at a later time. That's all it is. Code splitting is the process of just moving the split, making a split between two files. You can, in theory, grab them both at the same time. You can just have two different script tags grabbing each chunk and each part of this application, right? But lazy loading is basically the concept of, all right, I'm going to decide at some that there's some trigger. It can be a timer, it can be a scroll, it can be a click somewhere. That I'm just going to go and grab that code that the user doesn't have on their computer right now because now I'm good and ready to get that stuff right. So I think that the best way to do this is to just give you a concrete example. So I have here a very small little webpack set up here, and I'm running a very small little Express server with a very static little file here as you can see and here is my little application so I'm basically creating 
this tiny little app that just uses React Router and two routes. So we're going to look at this a little bit closer in just a moment. So the basic idea of this is that or here I have my little application as you can see here and everything is good in the neighborhood, right? So I click this link and you see that something says load, it says loading and then I go to my next page here and I can click and then I can go backwards. And after that you'll notice that I can just click back and forth as much as I want and I don't really see, I don't see that loader anymore or that loading text. Let's refresh and you notice that I was on the on foo and I refresh it says loading and then I actually hit the thing and then I can go back and forth Let's refresh no loading and go to foo and then I actually see the loading so what's by basically happening here is that I am using both code splitting and I'm using lazy loading so this app is very small, but it illustrates one of my favorite examples of how to use code splitting and lazy loading in a very... I, I personally think that this is a very effective manner of doing it. So here is my main page. This is the page that I want to load as quickly as humanly possible, but that go to foo or the foo endpoint, that's not the first thing my user is going to see usually. They're going to see this page. And this other route is something that, all right, it is useful, it is great, I mean it's got a link, right? but it's not the most important thing. So I code split that out and then I will add a lazy loading strategy for it. And the strategy that I pick is that I want the user to fetch that that extra bundle when they try to go there. I could do it in many other ways, but this is the strategy that I feel is the most, most appropriate for doing route level splitting. So when I click here, you'll notice that I make a request here called bundle.back. And if we look at my code, I have two bundles. Here I have the main bundle, which is tons and tons and tons of code, of course. And then I have my bundle back, which is a very small amount of code. But let's just scroll through here. I think that we should see something here. Yeah, here you'll notice that there's this text called back to foo. And if we go to my other component here, that's exactly what all this is. It's a very small, uh, it's just a very tiny uh, token. Uh, component that I made here for this demo of course but I hope you start to see the, the idea here so I have basically split this code out because I don't need it to be in the original bundle or the first bundle or the main bundle when the user first visits, visits my page I will simply get it when the user goes to that page because remember I don't have a guarantee that the user is going to want to see that in that route maybe they never go there maybe they just bounce or they go to some other route or something like that Kind of hard to go to another route on this application, I will admit, but I hope you can get the idea. So, how is this done? Well, basically what I'm doing here is that I have a route here, which is just, you know, that's the base route that's going to render immediately when the user goes to the page. So that I need to be in the original bundle. And then I have my other component here called back. So what is back? Back is simply a component that is wrapped in the React Loadable. This is just a convenience library that does the job for me. Well, all it really does is that it allows me to do a dynamic import and it also knows how I could build this myself but I felt I wanted to save some time here. Uh, all it does is that it exposes two functions where you have a loader which is going to return a promise of the thing that I'm actually going to inject into the DOM or the component that's going to be there once this is done and then it has a loading function that returns the thing that represents that component until it's loaded so that's where the loading text was coming from and I've created this little wait function here just so you can see this kind of action and all that does is that it takes a we have a dynamic import here which is going to return a promise and then I'm going to get a value which is going to hold the default value which is the component itself I pass that into my wait function which returns another promise and then all that does is that it's called set timeout and after a second it's going to resolve that component and actually return it so I can get that nice little delay that we appreciate so much for demo purposes so that's pretty much it. And then this little fun, little comment here is just a webpack thing where I can name my chunk because otherwise it's going to be named something like zero or one or something like that. And that's not as nice. So I just wanted this chunk to be named back. So this is just in, I, I'm not saying that you should lazy load every single route, but this is a very efficient way of using code splitting and lazy loading. Doing it at the route level is one of my favorite things by far. So 
just have this with you. So the next time you think that, all right, I'm going to see if I can improve my page load time some in some fashion, then have that, just have that with you. Start thinking about, do I have like some nested routes or something that may not be the most important thing in the world to have right now, like immediately when the user sees the first thing that they get, get to the page, right? And see if you can actually use something like this to just split that out and fetch it at a later time. Now you don't have to do it when you're like clicking something, you could do it as, you, as I was saying, you could just say that alright, the initial load is going to happen immediately, I split out everything and then I lazy load, not maybe on click, so it doesn't have to be then, maybe just when the page is finished loading and then I'll prefetch things even though maybe the user is not going to go there. In my case here, I prefer to be conservative. I'm just going to load whenever the user wants to go somewhere instead of being eager and fetching things because, you know, people are on mobile devices and they have data policies and stuff like that and not enough money to pay for things. So I want to save them some money, right? So hopefully you found this useful and yeah, have a great day.